to the regularly scheduled uh, meeting of the Rochester Downtown Development Authority for Wednesday, April 21st, 2021. Uh, Madam Recording Secretary, the roll, please. Hey, remember to state where you're joining from. Yeah. Yep. Bob Bloomingdale. Um, here from South Carolina. Tanya Karsten, Chris Johnson, Lisa Germani Williams, Marilyn Trent. Here. City. In Rochester. Oh, sorry, Rochester. I'm looking around to see what happens. Eric <laughs> Diana. Uh, here, Rochester, Michigan. Tony LaPuma. Here, Oakland Township. Mayor Bixon. Here, Rochester. And I say Tanya Karsten. Here, Rochester. And Chairman Giovanelli. Uh, here, also in Rochester. Uh, thank you, quorum. everybody. Oh, fantastic. So we had a bit of a quorum uh, struggle earlier in the afternoon, but I really appreciate everybody uh, jumping on and, and getting uh, spending some time with us. We have a relatively short agenda, so it should go pretty quickly. So I wanted to thank you for your commitment this evening, and uh, we uh, certainly appreciate it. Uh, with that, um, the first item on the agenda uh, requiring approval is the meeting minutes from the prior meeting on March 17th. Is there any questions or is there a motion or a feature for that? Anybody? I'll, make the motion. I'll, I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> motion by LaPuma, support by Trent. Is there any uh, questions on the uh, meeting minutes for March uh, 17, 2021? Uh, seeing none, um, Madam Secretary. Bob Bloomingdale? Uh, yeah, uh, yes. Tanya Karsten? Sorry, I muted myself. Yes, I'm here. Tony LaPuma? <laughs> yes. Eric Diana? Yes. Marilyn Trent? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Chairman Giovanelli? Yes. Motion passed. Fantastic. Thank you. One of the things I'm going to miss about Zoom meetings is all the sort of impromptu funness of it all. So, uh, audience comments. Um, I'm not seeing anybody. So, if anybody does chime in, we'll certainly um, uh, acknowledge you. Um, it looks like to be just us kids for right now. Uh, so, with that, the liaison reports um, City Council, uh, Ann Peterson said she was going to be a little late. So, Mayor, I didn't know if you wanted to. to uh, kind of get us up to date with uh, what's going on at council and, and uh, whatnot. Yeah, we, we're having a, um, as I think, I think we approved the DDA and PSD or we heard the presentation last time and um, it looks like that, you know, that's was approved to go into the final budget for final budget approval. Um, so, so that was good. Um, and Nick helped me out. What else was going on? <laughs> um, I, you know, not 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 too eventful. Got it. Um, and we're still we're still deciding on we're going to keep the Zoom meetings one more month. There's still a lot of board members and the various boards and commission have not been vaccinated. You know, the numbers were pretty high this week. So. Um, you know, if we did it, we'd just do it for one more month, but that's kind of where we are with that. And we're having, we're having a budget workshop, as Ben remembers, this Friday to kind of talk about some of the macroeconomic issues and talk about, you know, the fire department and what to do with the money coming from Washington and things like that. Got it. Well, thank you. And I know else? you... Mm -hmm. You guys are doing that on a Friday night, which uh, you're definitely yeah. doing the Lord's work. So thank you for that. We appreciate it. It's the only time we could get a get enough people together at the last last minute. Oh dear, yeah. Ay, ay, ay. Well, thank you for that, and thank you for the update. We appreciate it. Um, Chamber of Commerce, Marilyn Trent. I have nothing. Ah, excellent. Well, this nothing. is going to be a faster meeting than I thought. Well, we'll put you on hold until next month, and we'll have all sorts of stuff. Right. Yes, I will have a lot to say next month. <laughs> Got it. Uh, perfect. Uh, Historical Commission, Don is not with us, and I understand that a report was supposed to be sent in, and it was not, so there's nothing from that. And Principal Shopping District, Paul had a funeral to attend to today, so Christy's going to go ahead and pick that up. 
Hi, everyone. So from PSD from last Tuesday, they sent uh, two requests for recommendations to City Council that they'll be seeing. I don't know if it'll be at Monday's meeting or it would be the first meeting in May. Uh, the first is for Junk in the Trunk, uh, bringing that event back that uh, takes place in the Upper Farmers Market Lab and that one um, for June. And then the other one is bringing back the Thursday night market concept that we started last year. Last year, we did it on the top of the East parking deck. Uh, this year, the proposal that we're uh, working with the police chief on and bringing forward to city council is to actually do it on West 4th Street. So it'd be more centrally located for the businesses so they could take advantage of the traffic. And we're hoping um, as coded guidelines change up that we would be able to add more entertainment and some of the other things that we were hoping to do. Whereas last year it had to be a little bit more Spartan and we really couldn't do much of anything other than have our boots. So we're hoping to do uh, a little bit more of that. Um, the proposal was to do it for six weeks, starting in June and then ending in mid-July, right before sidewalk sales would kick off. There was that. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Taylor provided a great update on the farmer's market that's getting ready to open on May 1st. Very good. Okay. Fantastic. Trying to uh, get uh, more more normal. I vote for more normal this year. So <laughs> more normal, the faster, the better. So thank you yeah. for that. We appreciate it. Uh, General Business Agenda, Economic Development Update, Mr. Nick. All right. Let's make sure I'm not muted here. Okay, I'm not muted. Um, so things, <laughs> as Randy, our billing official, uh, said, uh, he it, when he was in Troy, it wasn't this busy. It's craziness. It's it's all, there's all kinds of commercial stuff, there's residential stuff going on, and uh, it's nice to see the robust economy in town. So, um, little, just little things that are indicators to me, little backfill places, like we did today, I talked to this lady, I think she said at least today, at the old Pilates place on East Street. You would think that'd be a tough place, you know, to lease back out. Um, was it Leo you said, Christy, that's his name? The old sli slaver, yeah. So Silver. 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 they've had they've Silver. had that for a really long time, and she left due to COVID. And a, another personal studio, a young lady's going to go in there as a personal trainer, take the exact same spot, and reopen her, her business there, which I thought was pretty cool. Finally, one twenty South Main, which is the old collision shop, is now for sale. You know, Bob, <laughs> I know you tried out how many times with that guy James Riley, but he finally agreed. I think it's, I think what I saw is 1.3 million. So he'll be getting calls, I'm sure. We'll get wonky ideas, but we'll, we'll vet them all out, right? But finally, he loosened the grip to at least say he would consider selling it, which is great. These are permits, chief financials, headquarters today, literally. We got that going. Mr. Randazzo is working on getting his soil erosion permit to city council to start uh, moving some earth on that project. Um, we met with Joey Lechurco, and these are things that would support the DDA's area. Joey Lechurco and his partner own the cement plant. Now they own the little sliver that bond desk people own, and they own Van, uh, Van Horns. Van Horns will vacate the property. They first get rid of all that stuff that you look over the bridge and see all the buses and stuff, all going to be gone. So Joey will be coming to the Planning Commission, hopefully June. So he showed us a, our a uh, concept plan that ran by staff we will bring into the planning commission for the special item. Um, it's like that one, I think it was one five-story buildings and then a series of row houses, brownstones along the river. So he's kind of trying to vet that out. So again, he's been watching the planning commission, see how they handle Randazzo, the 251 diversion, withdraw the site plan, you know, stuff like that. So he's looking at that property, Nakatala, I'm not going to say against our will, but you notice two signs up on Main Street. Dakota, it says River, uh, the River, what's he called? The, um, not River Place, but. River Square? R River Village or something. River like Square. River Square, okay. Yeah. He's not rendering up there of two new buildings he wants to build. He may remember he went to the Planning Commission about a year and a half ago. Yeah. He never followed up now. He submitted some drawings. He's going to go talk to the planning commission about putting two more apartments, three story, two and three story buildings, three on next to the karate studio, two in the middle between the silver spoon. But right in that courtyard, he's going to stick a building. I, it'll be an interesting discussion with him. So he's doing that. He's converting the apartments, as you know, 
they're actually coming along quite nicely. They've got the window wells in uh, most of the building and they're drywalling the top floor. And those are part of uh, Greg Snyder and his plans family for North Main for the 10 condos up there. Got his approval through the state and our engineering department. So we're ready to roll with that. Mike Blake um, is going to do a facade renovation. He just called today in the back along the alley um, where he took the, you know, he was going to put a second story on that building. I think he's at 307 or something like that. He is going to redo 407. the back. 407. <laughs> 407. Mike Blake? No, he's not. That's not Mike Blake. That's um, 409. Yeah, sports cards 407. Mike Blake, I think, isn't he 411? No, he's down the other way, down by DeMarco. You, that's Mike Jones. Know. That's Mike Jones. Mike Jones. Mike Blake. Mike Jones. Okay, Mike Jones. You're right. Mike Jones. Never question Christy. She knows her stuff. Mike Jones. <laughs> Mike. Yeah, the realty guy. <laughs> John Blake. You know. So uh, anyway, so he's gonna redo that. We got 407 coming in to convert the upstairs and then expand it above the sports memorabilia building. He actually bought the building from the Hughes's. We're going to expand it, make one apartment up there, and then redo the whole facade in a historic nature. That's coming to planning commission. Thursday night, got a meeting tomorrow night um, at the old Solaronics. They're looking to do make a presentation to the planning commission about an indoor storage facility, and we really don't have any in town. You can go up to U-Haul or down on um, Avon and Rochester Road. They're pretty much booked. So, um, they're looking at two young gentlemen are buying that property, convert into that, working with the Trail Commission to get rid of all that cement on the west side where the loading dock is and put all that into green. So it'd be a really nice buffer along the trail. So that presentation is that planning commission. All right, St. John's bring in trailers and on and on and on. And the, the macaron place, he's busy getting his equipment in there. So that's going well. The, um, the, is the platforms a separate discussion or should I have that yeah, now? Yeah, that's next. Uh, okay. Next. You can, uh, good. So, so you, I'm just rattling those off, but that's it's busy and that's really good. That's good. Um, does there any, anybody have any questions for Mr. Nick? No, I was just going to say, I talked to uh, Dr. Tal. He says he's going to start renting those out in June. It, wow, I believe it. He's moving along pretty good. Oh, they're moving. Sounds like he's trying to turn that whole complex into apartments, which, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's whatever it takes. Nick, uh, just on sort of uh, in in the economy in general, I, I mean, this is great news, don't get me wrong, but are you seeing guys kind of sort of sticking a toe in the water and kind of you know, holding their finger up in the air to the wind to see whether or not they want to move forward or they're going to wait, especially on the larger projects, or, or is this yeah, so everybody sort of? Yeah, fair question. So only one. So all so we all know Sherry's three years out probably. Um, Overlook did withdraw officially. The prices came in at like four hundred fifty dollars a square foot. So they officially let their site plan lap. So that's the only one. The other one's Grandazzo's trying to get through all the paperwork with the PDQ and all that stuff. So I believe that he's going to get started. Greg Schneider had to get through that. He he's getting started. All these other guys are actually pulling permits. These aren't just asking so i i would say it's a high rate of i'm get out of my way i'm ready to go right now that's that's good so the big giant ones like I say overlook's the only big giant one that backed off that was 72 condos is a big deal someday someone will buy that property and obviously y'all maybe you read already and board kind of snuck in oh yeah we bought the letico building and they're going to take that building and they have a committee to see what they're going to do with the old high school to resell that and get that back on the tax roll because they'll be taking the Letica property off the tax mm -hmm. roll. Forgot about that. That that could be a huge boon tax wise for us. You would think it would be residential, you know. So uh, we'll see about that. But yeah, no, there there's people pulling permits. Our permit fees are up two hundred percent from last year already. Yeah, so they, I think. I think the old high school obviously is going to be a giant hot potato for whoever's oh, going yeah. to try and develop that one. So uh, that yeah. uh, that I'm just going to do my Michael Jackson popcorn scene and just kind of watch that one unfold. I have a feeling that one's going to get pretty hairy. Um, you know, rightly so. That 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 particular building has so much history in our community. Um, yeah, there's, so there's, I, there's that mural in there. That's yeah, I know. Trying to figure that out. Um, you, you know, Rochester schools banned uh, to kill a mockingbird. You believe that? 
else. Is that a, like you shooting birds or is that something? No, no a, I mean, like a, when? Yesterday? <laughs> Sorry, when did they never do never saw that. Um, that or whatever. In January? I just found out myself. This yeah, January? That's, yeah. That's uh, getting woke is everywhere. So uh, hopefully people crazy wake stuff, up. man. Yeah, if I may ask, Mr. Chairman, Bob, I think you yes. went inside the school board building once and you were taking a look at it a long time ago. It's kind of a train wreck in there, isn't it? Yeah, that's an old building. Yeah, Bob, can you unmute? Yeah, sorry about that. I couldn't find my unmute button. Oh, sorry. Yeah, I, I did. It's, um, it really isn't that bad. I mean, okay. it's an old building. But where's the... Um, Where's the school administration going to go to? Letica, so Letica headquarters over on DeQuinder. Oh, that's what you meant. Yeah, I'm I sorry. I should have yeah, down a little bit. Yeah. Get it. So then they want they're going to sell then that right right. They, and the good yeah. Sorry. Well, they have a they formed a committee to decide what to do with it. Yeah. it and the good news for us is part of that building, and I know this part of the Letica purchase, Letica Corporation gets to stay in that building for a period of time. And over a third of the building, that's still taxable because it's not school use. So we'll merge our way into that fully off the tax. So will it end up being a push on the tax rolls? For the oh, city? no. If they develop any kind of density on the old admin building, it will be a huge uptick. Let it doesn't pay that high of taxes, believe it or not. There's potential serious tens of millions to be developed on that. It's four acres. And that, it's big. So that, there's, that, all, there's a lot of acres. Outside. That's four acres. Yeah, yeah, way bigger than you think. Yeah, that is. You could get it's right by you, stuff. Marilyn, right? What? That's yeah, it's right, right by, by me, but I just yeah. didn't realize that was four acres. Yeah. Yep. Jeez, I guess so. All right. Well, I guess stay tuned. News at eleven on that one. That one's going to exactly. be. I, I'm. I'm super glad I'm not on planning commission and on council to deal with that <laughs> one. So, uh, Mr. Mayor, have fun <laughs> with that one. Thanks. <laughs> Nick, one comment there. Um, if anybody comes looking, the Lysander apartments are going up for sale. So um, oh, if you happen to run across somebody interested, they're okay. available. I did not know that. Really? This is why we have the best board on the planet, because we everybody's just full of uh, useful information. Thank you for that. Uh, thank you for that update, Nick. We appreciate it. Uh, let's transition into the outdoor uh, dining platform program. Um, either one of you guys. Go ahead and take it. Nick, I'll just start with the actual platforms and then okay. kind of roll from there. Um, so the outdoor dining platforms, we reached out to all of the restaurants that had them previously. They all uh, were very appreciative that we were offering them again, and they all took us up on the offer. And uh, there were a few that had gotten nudged by cars, uh, some of the railings. So uh, we had our uh, resident amazing Bob Bloomingdale go ahead and make repairs on all of the platforms so they are ready to go. And then Nick, I don't know if you've heard from Jason if he's been able to schedule buyers to put them in place. Yeah, we held because of what was supposed to happen today, the snow. So anytime now, they'll start getting them out one at a time. So I've almost talked to all the operators. I told them, just be a little patient. We're going to get them out. Yay! They should yeah. Sorry. <laughs> I was cheering yeah. very loudly on the sun. Sorry. Yeah, no, we got so you. We're, uh, we're going we're gonna to get on them like in the next week or so because technically outside dining is not supposed to start till May 1st, but it allows the manager to extend that. So I talked to Blaine and, and we did. So we'll get them out quick. And then I talked to done all the paperwork out, all the outdoor dining normal people on Main Street. They've got the same so got almost all those back already. Remember, the city council allowed that to be the rest of the function for five years if they uh, don't have any violations against them. And all of ours complied last year, so all the outdoor dining will be going back in. They can put it in as soon as they get their undone approval. O'Connor's probably going in first. So and, uh, there's six of them. So they got all their paperwork in, the Giorgio's, the the um, Rochester Bistro, Saunders, uh, Danny Bologna's Cruise. Yeah, they, everybody got theirs in. And then we're working uh, Chris, with. Nope, sorry. Right. Oh no, I was just say I was just wondering if anybody else has asked for uh, new real estate uh, or help you know, with respect yeah. to platforms that didn't do it last year. Yeah, no, no platforms, but one for me. So Naps, the new owner of Naps, is what was I think I hope to say was really paranoid the governor was going to shut stuff down, but he was looking at every way to get more outdoor dining. So 
uh, I worked with them drawing a plan that we could get some in front of the building on the north side. He wanted to put a platform on the side street. Like Heather said, it would be okay by the bakery to take a space out, but he can't walk down the street serving food. So he forgot that, but we're going to try to get him a little outdoor dining area, kind of like Saunders or something. Just, it's the presence, I think, more sure. than anything. So I'm working with him on that. Yeah. All right, cool. So the second part of this agenda item is that uh, we had gone to city council to ask for approval to be able to place the platforms, uh, which they did go ahead and grant us, I think it was back in February. But the second piece of that is that last year it was different because we were paying for the free parking. Parking is no longer free. So we were asking city council if uh, they would be asking the DDA to pay for the use of those spaces. So they referred that to the PAC, the Parking Advisory Committee, they met uh, last month, uh, they were split in the discussion. We threw out, uh, myself and uh, Chief Schuttenhelm threw out some ideas of how we might be able to arrive at a fair number. Uh, that is what is in your packet right behind this agenda item. It shows uh, the actual meter spaces that would be occupied by the platforms and then shows you from 2018 and 19 what those meters generated May through October. We didn't use 2020 because obviously they weren't really in use. Um, and average of those two years comes down to if we were to pay for using these spaces May through October for just these spaces, $19,148. So this is due to go back to city council on Monday for their review from through a parking advisory update. But Ben wanted me to put it on this agenda to make everybody aware of, of where we are. Yeah, for sure. And then also, um, I don't know if it would be helpful. I guess, Mr. Mayor, you could tell us, but if uh, the DDA, um, you know, we've in effect said that we're happy with this, it's already in our budget and we, you know, we want to get these things going as quickly as possible. Uh, that way, um, council could, you know, um, have, have an uh, expedited blessing, as it were, um, if the dollar amount um, stays, you know, if the $19,000 yeah. seems fine. So, it, it seems fair to me, and, and, you know, obviously I can't make motions here, but um, I would uh, maybe ask that the uh, board, um, uh, because it's already in our budget, I think it's going to actually cross over two budget years, isn't it? So it is. Have yeah, it'll only be day. two months out of this budget year and then four out of the next one. Yeah, so, and it's the money's already been set aside. It's going to come out of the COVID money. So um, I would I would ask if somebody could make a motion that we... Um, uh, or we, let's have a discussion first, but, um, you know, if everybody's on the same page, I'd like to, uh, you know, have some sort of a formal um, opinion of the board, if, it, if, as it were, that could be referred back to council that we agree to this number and we, we really want to get these things out as quickly as possible. So um, anybody have any thoughts in that regard? I'm, I'm good with it. Okay, cool. So we talked uh, talk before at the executive committee meeting on this. Yep. So uh, if somebody would like to make a motion that we, um, we, we would strongly encourage, or we're happy to, the money's already in the budget, we're happy to, you know, uh, to pay the $19,000. We would like to get it uh, as settled as quickly as possible so we can get these things out. Um, oh, oh, but quick question, uh, Nick or Christy, uh, if we put them out and we don't have this amount resolved yet, is it cart before the horse or do we have to do one before the other? My understanding from council is that they allowed us to go ahead and place them with the understanding that we're good for it. We'd once the path okay. figured it out and we figured it out that we get a little grace period in there. So I think we're okay. I don't want to speak for the mayor, but I, I felt like that was, they wanted to give yeah. us the blessing so we could get the platforms going and fixed and knowing we could use them and put them out. And I think, I think they know we're good for it. Yeah. Right, go, cool. ahead. go ahead. Go uh, ahead. Bob. Yep. I, um, I was saying, I agree with it and I, I'll volunteer to make the motion. Okay, good deal. Um, Madam Recording Secretary, do you have a good feel for what the motion entails? All right, very good. Is there support for the motion? Second. Uh, support by Diana. Uh, Madam Secretary, the roll. Marilyn Trent? Yes. Mayor Bixon? Yes. Tony LaPuma? Are you there, Tony? You're, you're muted. Yes. I had it on you. Yeah. Sorry. Eric Diana? Yes. Tanya Karsten? Yes. Bob Bloomingdale? Mm -hmm. Yes. Chairman Gio Vanelli? Yes. Motion passed. Very good. Okay, so we'll refer that back to council that way. You know, if, you know, um, I suspect that it, hopefully everybody will be sort of like-minded so we can get, get, get on with it. But to the extent we need to uh, 
uh, whatever. I'm just going to leave it at that. So uh, thank you for that. I appreciate it. Um, so we're good there. They're going out. Uh, Murphy's Law. We're going to put them out, and it's going to snow six inches. But you know, whatever. We'll just start, have to sort of stick and move. Um, is there anything else we need to contend with, or are we in good shape? I, nobody new is asking, so I don't have to build any new ones. Um, did we have money in, I can't remember if we have money set aside, I'm sure we do someplace, for additional requests for um, equipment and that sort of thing? Is that still ongoing? Or That's still ongoing. On I haven't had anyone new come in yet, but I suspect because last year uh, tables and seating were very hard to come by. So I think we didn't have as many requests as we might have. So it wouldn't surprise me if we do that. I'm happy to put another blast out to the merchants, yeah. to remind them that that is something that's available to them if they're interested in it. It's just been a lull since it was winter time and we had taken care of anybody that needed heaters and greenhouses and things like that. Um, but yeah, no, we certainly put that out. It's still out of our COVID relief. Um, I think that we're getting close on that one, but we do have some money and fund balance that we can pull forward if we need to, to continue to support that program. All right, cool. So let's go ahead and get that word out. And then of course, any additional monies from the county or the state that become available, we want to communicate that out as well. Yeah. Um, fantastic. Uh, anything else on this or are we good? Good. All right, cool. Awesome. Thank you for that, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, that kind of dubbed into the restaurant support update. Um, so um, executive. Yeah, so, um, so the executive committee had asked uh, Nick and I to share um, what we're hearing from the restaurants, things that we're working on, things that are coming down the pipe. So I wanted to share that with you right now. Um, in the last week or so, I've been bothering some of my restaurant friends, asking them, you know, how things are going, where they're at. Um, the number one challenge I'm hearing is hiring. They're really having problems finding people. And, and it's not like they're trying to find, I don't want to say they're not trying to find the highest quality people. They're really open. Anybody wants to come in, needs to be trained, whatever. They're just not finding people right now. And that's across the board, whether it's a higher end restaurant, a quick service, what have you. So that seems to be a challenge. And I'm hearing that across the board. I know like the, the uh, PF Chang's up at the village, they had to close for two weeks because they don't have enough staff right now. So I think this is something we're going to be hearing going all the way into the summer. Um, I'm not quite sure if there's a way that we can help with that. I mean, I in my mind, I was thinking, you know, we could have, you know, like a static page on the website that lists all the, you know, businesses that are looking for people and all that stuff. But I don't know if that's really going to solve their problem. It's not a matter of people don't know. It's that they don't want those jobs because they've either moved out of the industry or they're still getting support through unemployment or other factors and so they're not eager to go back it, it's a lot of different factors so that's a challenge um but beyond that i'm hearing that carry out is st still strong for most of the businesses but they're starting to see more people coming to dine in as vaccines are becoming more readily available people are getting their shots they're becoming more comfortable so i'm hearing that quite a bit across um, the field. Also, um, the Restaurant Revitalization Fund is going to uh, get a new infusion of money through the American Rescue Plan. It looks like about $10 billion is really targeting local small restaurants. Um, through that plan, it's through the Small Business Administration. They have not opened up applications yet. They're doing some testing models, things like that. I sent the link out to all of the restaurants on, let's see, yesterday, and then uh, posted on the Downtown Rochester Merchant Closed Group. Facebook page as well. So it's there. It included a link that they could sign up for email to be get an email alert once the application's open and those will be ongoing. Um, they will be giving preference at the beginning. They have a special fund specifically for um, women owned businesses and minority owned businesses. But there is money for um, a catch off for all, but those uh, have a special fund just for those, which a lot of our uh, restaurants downtown happen to be uh, female owned. So that'll be um, a good plus for us. Um, last but not least on my list is that Oakland County, they are going to be re receiving some American Rescue Plan funds as well. Uh, they are still trying to figure out what they're going to do with those, but it was indicated to us that they are talking about whether it be for restaurants or across the board for all businesses that they are planning to bring back the grant program that they had two rounds of last year. They're talking about refunding that again. Uh, we're just waiting on more information. I don't think they've gotten a solid number of what they're getting and when the funds will be dispersed. My understanding for Anthony is that they come in waves. They're not giving all the money at one time. So this may be an ongoing program for them. So as soon as we know, we'll certainly communicate that out to the businesses to make sure, and especially the restaurants, to make sure that they're able to take advantage of those opportunities. Nick, did I miss anything that we've been working on? Danda? Sorry, I'm typing at the same time. Uh Oh, I think you're good. We're, yeah, same thing. I've stopped in some restaurants, and it, Tony will tell you it's 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 heavy. It's it's all over the state. 
unemployment keeps going, I think we're going to have a harder and harder time getting employed. That's yeah. why. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, thank you for that update. Does anybody have any questions for Christy? Um, the, two things. Number one, on the carryout, um, if they need parking spots dedicated for pickup for carryout, mm -hmm. have we given consideration for that? And is that in the 19 grand or not? Um, it's already uh, happening. Um, what okay. Steve did is he provided, we only, I think, had um, three or four businesses take advantage of it that we offered them the very fancy orange bag that says no parking that they could use. Um, they could take over like one set of meter heads right outside their business for carryout parking. So we only had a few that took us up on that because a lot of them are fronting off of alleys or they have other opportunities for people to stop and pick up stuff. So we had three do that. Um, at this point, we have um, not been charged for those things. I'm hoping that continues. <laughs> So, <laughs> but there's only three of them out there right now. La, 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 la. <laughs> yeah, there's only there's only three. But yeah, I think that um, Steve is open if people need special considerations or anything. Anything that I throw by him, he's more than happy to consider it and try and figure out a way to make it work for them. Got it. All right. Well, I just wanted to make sure that we address that. I know you guys have covered it, but I just wanted to double circle back on it. And then with respect to unemployment, I mean, that's happening across the board. It goes through, I think, through the end of September. Uh, with current funding and in some states, I'm not exactly sure what Michigan is at now, but I know multiple states, uh, You could, if you stay home, you could, in effect get 20 bucks an hour for 40 hours a week uh, for unemployment, um, which is obviously driving the fact uh -huh. that people not. Yeah, it's crazy. So um, I better stay home now, I guess. I know, right? Yeah. It's the, uh, Christy, the best. The best yeah. Christy, I was going to ask, um, would there be any benefit in maybe uh, having the restaurants like advertise to somewhere like an Oakland University because I know a lot of college students might be looking for employment this summer uh coming out of classes right I think a lot of them are already using those levers um we're also finding uh, okay. on our love local Rochester page and I see that they're joined like the Rochester Community Cares I don't know if anyone's seen that group page that's another really robust page that came out of this um, so I think that people are really working the social channels, and I'm pretty sure I've heard a lot of people that are trying for OU students as well as well as Rochester College. Okay. Yeah. Are there, excuse me, are there any job fairs or anything that? Nobody's that, holding in-person events right now, so no job fair. No, but I mean some like a webinar job fair. I don't know, just some sort of online thing that's out there yeah. or anything. No, like the, that? the challenge, I think that what I'm hearing for the restaurants, it's not a show. People know about the jobs, they just don't want them. <laughs> In the last week, that's though. the challenge. I mean, I, that yeah, I get it, but I guess, well, I'm not. Yeah, I I'll do some research. I'll see what I can come up with. Mm -hmm. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not saying I have the answer. I'm just saying that I maybe it's different places that may need people looking for jobs that people don't know. <laughs> We we will try and help as much as we can. I, I know I will say that um, my entire four year undergraduate was spent uh, as busing and waiting on tables. So I'm happy to dust my hat off and get back out there and uh, help out if I can. Yeah, uh, Ben and I maybe we could split. Right, you take right, exactly. first shift. I'll take second. <laughs> All right. Well, I've got my my freshman from Marquette will be home uh, May 15th, so I will make sure I let him know that there's jobs aplenty and to get his behind out there That's... and uh, get one okay, of them. Okay, so. you got it. We need to target the parents, not the kids. Right. That's what it so, is. That's right. yeah. <laughs> 100%. All right, good deal. Well, All right, well, I thanks for it. that. All right, thanks. Yeah, it is what it is. So we'll, we'll do what we can to support that. Christy, anything that you guys come up with, creative ways to, uh, um, you know, get... Um, you know, assemble the talent, as it were, um, and and uh, let people know. I'm sure you will. Yeah. So. I know State Rep Tisdale was in town, and he did some merchant uh, meetups. I think he did one. Tanya, he did one at your place, didn't he? Tanya? She's muted. Yes, sorry. I was muted. Okay. Yes, he came and spoke with me with his admin. Uh, we spoke for about an hour. Yeah, so he sent a summary to us that he had posted on his um, state rep website, and he said across the board, the number one thing that every restaurant that he met with told him is that hiring, actually, I shouldn't even say that, not every, restaurant, every business he met with said that hiring was a concern. So he's trying to see if there's anything on the state level that they might be able to assist with. So we're hoping that maybe there's something there if enough people hear that noise that they need help, that they need help, maybe there's something that can happen that way too. Yeah, Law of unintended consequences. Yeah. Yeah, right. I'm uh, just astonished. 
Uh, okay. Um, so thanks for that. I appreciate that. So let's get to the re regular reports, uh, executive director update. Oh, no, we still got two more. Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm f trying to get fa way fast here. Spring events, promo update. Go. Sure. So Sorry. The executive committee thought we could all use some good news. And so uh, they asked me to share what the PSD has coming up for May and June. So starting with the farmer's market opening on May 1st, we will be opening uh, the way that we operated the market last year. We will have one way in, one way out. We'll be counting attendance. Um, and we do have a full slate of vendors coming back, a few new ones, because uh, we did have a few farmers, you know, fall out over the last year, just different reasons, everybody's doing different things these days, um, but we will have a full market we open on May 1st and we will have our uh, tote bags that we will be giving away. If anyone wants to see this year's tote bag, if you may have noticed it on the cover of the In Town Magazine, and there's Taylor right there, mm -hmm. <laughs> but that's the bag. It's a really nice bag this year. So we have 500 of those we're giving away on opening day and they will be stuffed with offers and flyers from our downtown businesses. Then, and that continues every Saturday, May through October. And um, that is sponsored again by Ascension. So they were kind enough to come back as our presenting sponsor, which is amazing. Um, Deck Art is May 13th and 14th. We have 422 artists that have signed up. And uh, we've so far, we have about 70 boards that have been returned, which is about par for the course. We usually get the last 300 or so over a two day period because we're open late uh, Thursday night, tomorrow night and Friday night for people to drop off their decks. So we're battening down the hatches with our uh, volunteers and we're going to have lots of decks coming in, but they're pretty awesome. Some of the kids decks are amazing. I mean, just crazy the amount of art. So um, we're putting them in every business we possibly can think of. We might have about 40 of them in the studio. There's just so many decks coming in. So we're excited to bring that one back. Um, for June, PSD is working on a new event called Love Local Rochester Month. And it's going to have several components to it. We're bringing back the Love Local Loyalty card that we did last summer that was super popular for the businesses. So that's coming back. Um, we're doing a Drink Local campaign. So we're uh, going to be tapping into all the mixologists around town and we're going to be doing a uh, text to vote for your favorite cocktail. So we're kind of excited about that one. That's going to be super fun. Um, the back in the day signs that we did with Pat McKay through the museum, those have been super popular. We are getting a whole nother round on top of what we already have that the museum is working on for us right now. And those will be installed uh, in late May to be ready for Love Local Month in June. And then uh, last but certainly not least, if anyone saw it on today, uh, we put out there for everybody our new Rochester No Filter event. Uh, what this is, it's an idea that we actually had this concept last year, but with everything else going on, we decided to set this one aside and hold on to it. And we're glad we did because it fits with Love Local Month. Uh, the idea is that we're inviting people to come. It's a $20 registration fee and we will furnish them with a disposable film camera. And yes, film everybody. I know my millennials are like, what is that? So <laughs> we've got our uh, film camera. People can register. We have 50 cameras available and we're challenging them to take photos of their favorite things about Rochester. Once they take their photos, they will then return the disposal camera to us. We will get it developed as a thank you. They will receive a set of their prints. We're also going to select one print from each camera to be framed and put up on the wall at the studio. So we'll have 50, um, pieces up on the wall and those will be for sale for $20 as a fundraiser for Love Local Rochester. So it's a nice big full circle kind of thing. We're pretty excited about it. Um, we just put it up on social today and we've already had about 10 phone calls asking what time we open on Monday. So we're excited yet terrified. So we think it'll be super fun. Uh, the other thing, if you saw in the magazine, we're kind of doing this retro feel to things. So there you'll start seeing it's reversed on your screen right now, this Love Local logo. Um, it's kind of got a 70s vibe to it. And that's what we're going with for the look of this whole event. Um, so we have these really cool like bubble 70s mugs coming in and some retro ringer tees. And we're working on like a sling bag or something very 70s. So we thought that was going to be a lot of fun. So um, we're excited for the opportunity. And we're really hoping that this is going to be uh, something that we can build out in the future and actually maybe even add music and entertainment and lots of things like that. And I'm sure my family would go, I'm busy. So... <laughs> Anyway, so um, that's Love Local Month. Then June 19th, bring back Junk in the Trunk. As I had mentioned, that's going to city council. We're really hoping that that gets traction. We went ahead and already sent out applications in anticipation of get, getting it approved. Uh, what's working in our favor is that all of our events until we hit November are outdoors. And outdoor gathering right now is at 300 people. 
So we're pretty excited about that. Of course, anything that we're doing has our favorite friend, the asterisk that says subject to change. So we're working with Chief Steve on everything and up to minute guidelines if there's anything we need to adjust or pivot to make sure these events can happen. But Junk in the Trunk is getting a great reception. And then last but not least, we are bringing back the ever popular front porch stories. So our very first one will be kicking off on June 22nd, um, and we're going to be hosting that at the Royal Park Hotel outdoors, and we're having four generations of Rewalds. So we will have Bev Rewald, we'll have Frank, we're going to have Ashley, Jason, and Sean, and then they're going to be bringing the babies. So <laughs> we're excited. We're going to make sure we get a picture of that. So we think that's going to be super fun, and then we're doing one in July and one in August. So uh, it was fun. I've been uh, reviewing some of the community survey results that have been coming into the city just to see if there was anything for downtown. And I was really pleasantly surprised how many people mentioned they hope we do front porch stories again, since we only got a year of those under our belt before we had to stop last year. So I think that speaks to what people really love. Although, and Tony knows that we are never, ever going to top Bill and Tony LaPuma on Nick's porch for the very first one. Thank you. Thank you. The bar <laughs> is high. The bar is super high. Like you can't even see it. It's so yeah, that was honestly, that was one of those events. I couldn't, my face hurt from smiling so much. It was just, it was one of the best things I think we ever did. But that is what we have going on for May and June. Barring anything else happening, this is the path that we're going down and working with Chief Steve to make sure we can do it uh, with all the current guidelines and keeping everybody safe and happy. That's awesome. Uh, asterisk notwithstanding, um, it's time to start doing these things. So uh, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for that update. Appreciate it. Uh, shop small. Yes, so this was um, an unexpected surprise. So um, American Express and Main Street America were hosting a contest in the month of February and early March asking any communities that wanted to put together something to support their shop small order and take out. So any kind of promotion that would be hyper-focused on supporting restaurants. So we had already had Foodie February in play. We had been working on that since early January. So we went ahead and submitted Foodie February for this. Um, we were also encouraged by John Bry from Oakland County that he happened to be um, in contact with National Main Street and they had shown um, some examples of what different things in communities were doing. And American Express already knew about Foodie February because they follow us on Instagram because we're a neighborhood champion and we stalk them and tag them. So they finally just followed us. So they knew about it and said, wow, we'd love to see promotions like that apply. So once that word got to me, I'm like, well, we don't need promotions like that. We've got that one. So we applied, um, hadn't heard anything. And then two weeks ago, I got this email that says, congratulations, you are the first place winner in the National American Express Shop Small Contest. So um, two weeks ago, I got to do, thank you, we're very excited. So uh, two weeks ago, I got to log on to the virtual National Main Street Now conference and uh, give a little blip about Foodie February and what it's all about. And American Express was on there, congratulated us, said that they were really blown away by our promotion. Um, the other piece of this, in addition to, there'll be a blog post and press release that are going out from National and American Express tomorrow. I literally just got the email while we were sitting here. Um, we also get a cash prize of $5,000 that is to be reinvested for our restaurants. Um, maybe for businesses too, but I have a feeling it's just restaurants. So um, once we get that those dollars in and the guidelines of what we can spend it on, I'll bring that back to the board. We're already working on a few ideas out of our office, um, but we'd like to do something special with that so that people can recognize that it didn't just you know go into some pot somewhere that we took that money and, and doubled down on it. Because as you know, you give us a dollar, we can make you 10. So we'd like to do something special with that money. So that was a really nice thing for us. I don't know if there's a plaque or something, but we'll see when the blog comes out yesterday. You'll, tomorrow you'll see us, us posting like crazy about that. Awesome. So. Mm -hmm. Well, it's uh, once again, it's we're blessed by, uh, with, with the, a, an abundance of riches with respect to our staff and the folks on this board. So uh, thanks for that as usual. Mm -hmm. um, talking about the bar being high, it just keeps going up, up, up with you guys. So uh, can't wait to see what we else, else else is up our sleeve. Um, all right. So with that, uh, any questions for Christy on any of the general business agenda items uh, that we spoke of a moment ago? None. Seeing none. Uh, regular business, Madam Director, update. Um, I don't think I have anything other than what's in my written report tonight, since I just went over all the shop small and all the other fun stuff. Um, I'm just looking over Jenna and Taylor's. I don't think there's anything else that I didn't already mention in other agenda items. So I think we're good for you that. You want to bring up uh, what uh, Rep Tisdale uh, proposed? Let's sure. Do that now. 
Sure. So um, Rip Tisdale is really representing Rochester. And so um, we've been talking quite a bit. And he threw out the idea because he also had heard when he was going around the visiting the businesses and a lot of them were having trouble getting vaccinations either for themselves or for employees, just not being able to find appointments. So um, he had thrown out the idea to me, would we consider um, doing a pop-up possibly at the studio where it would be exclusively to be signed up for by downtown business owners and their employees. And so he said, you know, if I wouldn't got information about that, would you be interested? I said, sure, get us the information. I'll take it back to the board. So right before this meeting, uh, I had gotten a uh, email from his assistant Assistant, letting us know that they had already been reaching out both to Meyer and Rite Aid and that they're doing pop-up clinics and that it could be something that we could host that way. They give us a special code that our business owners and uh, employees could register and then have a specific day that they would come down. They would manage the entire process. Um, all we would have to do is advertise it to our constituents and they would handle all the appointments, all the rechecks, everything. Um, I ran it by Ben to see if we wanted to talk about it tonight. He said, yes, but I'd like to get Kratz first blush on it. I went ahead and sent it to him. He got it right back to us. And he said he has uh, no issues. So it seems like it'd be a pretty cool thing. So I wanted to get everyone's thoughts here. Uh, and then I can get back to um, Representative Tisdale's office and see uh, what we want to do. Sounds good. So I thought my my first my first default is all right. How can how can we get hurt by it? <laughs> so somebody 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 something happening to somebody. You know, run it by legal and let's make sure we're good there. So yeah. So Jeff took a peek at it and, and yeah. he's he's uh, given it his cursory blessing. So with that, um, I don't know, Christy, have you had a chance to forward that to everybody yet or not? I have not. I will actually once we're done here, I can forward it to everybody to take a peek at. And they had a bunch of different information. I think if we give them the high side that we want to go, then I think they'll dig a little bit deeper into it and then it. We'll go from there. So yeah. Uh Marilyn. Yeah, um, I got my shots at Rite Aid and actually it went very smoothly. I think it's a great idea. I think Rite Aid was at, uh, very good at uh, the whole from, get, from signing up to getting me both uh, vaccines appointments in and out yeah. is in and out yeah they had sent me information I think they had talked to both Rite Aid and Meyer um, for the opportunity so there's information that I mean that I'll send you for both of them well so yeah both both of them I have heard I mean I had experience with Rite Aid but both of them I've heard well this is what they do for flu shots so it was just an sure. easy no brainer right. Um, yeah, I did my, uh, we, uh, Taylor and I did Meyer Ford Field. Um, um, it was run like a top. And as an event planner, I was like, this is how you run a vaccine. This is it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. <'cause laughs> you had a snack at the end or something. So yeah, a little, <laughs> takeaway yeah. gift or something. They had masks. I'm like, no, I'm good. That's just <laughs> I didn't get a well, I thought, but yeah. I did. Uh, but on. I got my card. <laughs> uh, Mr. Bear. Yeah. Can we, can we also offer it to any DDA board members and, um subcommittee board members who are interested too yeah i think it's anybody who we decide within rochester i mean i think they're just trying to make it so that if it is downtown that is focused on a group if we wanted to do something different like for the residents or something like that i think that would be something different the thing program that he sent us was specifically for uh businesses and groups so but there may be other programs but yeah i mean i think we could open it up to anybody because i mean everyone who's on this board is either a property owner or a business owner we got a few residents, but I think we know Eric's all set. Yeah. <laughs> How are you doing there, Eric? We haven't heard from you in a minute. You okay? <laughs> hey, I, I've been great. I uh, I, I second an emotion. Um, <laughs> we're just we're, we're getting through it. That's okay. awesome. Uh, so I guess uh, direction wise, is there anybody that uh, this is causing heartburn to do at uh, at the studio? Um, speak now or forever hold your peace. It looks like we've got a nodding of heads and or uh, the silence of those not on video tells me that I think we're all pretty much on the same page. So go ahead and let Rep Tisdale know that we are in um, mm -hmm. and to let us know what that looks like, you know, obviously sooner rather than later. Um, I know folks want to get get crack a on this. So um, sure. we're ready to go with AR. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. All right. Cool. Fantastic uh, events and marketing. We kind of talked about that. Was there anything else that you wanted to add to that? Nope, everything that uh, is in Taylor and Jenna's reports we talked about at one of the agenda items tonight. So we're All right, good. Good deal. Okay. All right, perfect. Financial reports in there for your consideration. Any questions with respect to the financials? Uh, seeing or hearing none, we will move forward. Uh, BizDev, 
Uh, they did not meet this month. We didn't have too much for their agenda. So we're going to circle back in May and we're hoping for in person. <laughs> yeah, got it. Uh, and then site development. Nothing. Nothing, Nothing yet. All right. Well, then there you have it, folks. Uh, the, the, more, the more we do, the more we don't do, thanks to COVID. So uh, once this all breaks, we're just going to have tons and tons of stuff to do and get caught up on. So I think we're, we get the big stuff hit for sure. It's the little yeah. things that make yeah. it more fun. Uh, go ahead, Christy, sorry. Oh, one thing, Nick and I had talked about this uh, yesterday is that um, with the sidewalks downtown, because remember we had that big number that uh, we had held back on, um, there was some discussion between Nick and I of perhaps, you know, how we've been uh, taking the money each year and putting it away into the city fund for capital projects. Um, because I don't, Nick, correct me if I'm wrong, we don't have anything scheduled this next year. Is that right? That's correct. We were talking about at, maybe making a request of the city to take money out of that capital fund that they're holding since we don't have any projects next year and putting it into the sidewalk so we could just finish that stuff off, especially the ones behind sergeants. I mean, they're becoming a hazard. It's not great. Yeah, it's like $142,000. We had our folks bought inventory, every bad sidewalk, that side streets, raised bricks, all that stuff. On top of the 30,000, it's about another 142. There's money in the capital budget set aside you can knock them all out now, like in the next month and a half, you'd have your whole town cleaned up, downtown cleaned up of sidewalk trip hazards and rain, rain, all that good uh, stuff. If you so is, choose to go is that, that a, is that a budget amendment? We would ask city council to have a budget amendment, correct? Yeah, because it's okay. actually money that's in there that we've already transferred to them. Right. Yeah, so. just moving it from the right pocket to the left, I get it. Correct. So, um, uh, but would you council make a promise to not hit us with another 400 grand after that in the next year, right? So you know that's what's going to happen. Uh -oh. One never knows, right? One that's right, exactly. <laughs> exactly right. So, uh, so yeah, I guess, um, did you need something from us to give direction to council in that regard? A motion or? would be great. Yeah, a motion would be great. Okay. All right. So the notion for the motion here is that uh, we are uh, asking the council to uh, redirect one hundred and forty thousand dollars. Is that? I think it was uh, one. It's like one thirty-four plus twelve. So I, if you said one hundred fifty thousand, we know that'll cover all. Okay, so one hundred fifty thousand dollars from the capital that we've set aside and redirect that to be spent in this current fiscal year. Right. Uh, you're saying you want to get it done right away, right? Correct. Right. Great. Right. They're already going to be in town, so it could save us some money since they're already coming um, in to do yeah. curb work. Oh, I know. I did. Yeah. Nick had his guys out here. Half my sidewalks got pink stripes on it. Right. Yeah, sorry about that. All, thanks a lot, buddy. You're the best. <laughs> uh, so, uh, uh, yeah. So that would be. So if somebody can make that motion, uh, that'd be great. I'd like to make that motion. What you said. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Awesome. All motion time. by. Perfect. Motion by Lapuma. Support by Trent. Yeah. Okay, support very my, good. Yeah, I'll support uh, what uh, Tony said, what Ben said. Got it. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, Madam Secretary, the roll. Tanya Karsten? Yes. Eric Diana? Yes. Tony LaPuma? Yes. Bob Bloomingdale? Yes. Marilyn Trent? Yes. Mayor Bixson? Yes. Chairman Giovanelli? Yes. Motion passed. Excellent. All right. So Thank you we'll so much. Christy, would you fire off an email to Jason and Blaine, tell them that what happened and that we'd like to get it to a council meeting as quick as possible? Yeah. Can you help me write the memo tomorrow to make sure I get yeah, all just remind, right? Yep. Remind me, we'll do it. I mean, okay. if time's of the essence, you can stick it yeah. on Friday. So everybody's going to be there Friday. They can probably take care of it on Friday. So. Yeah. Because I mean, do you think we can still get it on Monday's regular council agenda? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah today's went. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Because I could get it first thing in the morning over to you. I think we could, yeah. Because, Mayor, would you support taking it this way? Yeah, meeting? we haven't. We, uh, Blaine and I have not had the final conversation to finalize the agenda, okay. so that's fine. If you're okay, that, oh, that'd be great. Yeah, okay. Nick, now get something over to Blaine first thing in the morning. Okay. Right, cool. Christy, do you uh, need the motion the... first thing in the morning? Uh, uh, no, but the yeah, motion. We're, we're good. Okay. Yeah, I think. I can just say just that. the was... fact that it happened, and they can, you know, I mean, it, it, it's obvious. So the paper. Mayor's our witness. It. Well, I was just saying, the good news is, is we got the guy who sets the agenda on the board. Exactly. So, uh, right. It's all good, man. All good. It's good to be the, it's good to be the king. All right. Very right. good. Sometimes, uh, right? Right. I know. That's, mm -hmm. What's the old saying? Uh, no, such, no good deed goes unpunished, mm -hmm. right, Mr. Mayor? Mm -hmm. uh, all right. With that, I think we've accomplished all of the agenda. Uh, we're Ms. now miscellaneous. Does anybody yeah, have Mr. any? Chairman, term? I have yes, one sir, miscellaneous, please. if I may. 
Um, so uh, in July, July, second week of July, the city managers from the state of Michigan will be hosting their summer event at the Royal Park in town and a couple other hotels around. So Lane's on the planning committee, so he approached me and Christy to do a walking session, if you will. So this is just an image, just a bit of a heads up. But we're gonna host the think between 15 and 30 people, city managers, so we're gonna walk them around, park down the fire hall at Heroes Point, take them show them, you know, where the Rewell headquarters, our economic development stuff, take them through town, take them to the studio. Christy's gonna talk to them about how we survived COVID with a vacancy rate of virtually nothing. And then take them into the municipal park. I'm gonna show them the trout stream and stuff. So we're gonna spend about what, two and a half hours walking them. So yeah, the different. only concern we have is they have an option of our session or they can go golf. golf. Yeah. <laughs> so don't laugh, so uh, we're gonna make it so fun. And, yeah, I don't even uh, golf and I wouldn't go to our session, but okay. Whatever, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make it fun. So we're going to try to get some people to come. Like, so at least they'll be in town. Yeah, they're going to be in town and we'll probably be good to stuff. go. Yeah. Right. All right, very good. So thanks for that, Nick. We appreciate it. And it's always good to have those things, you know, that just oh, yeah. further puts more feathers in the cap of Rochester. Absolutely. Um, I, I did want to acknowledge, um, we do have a guest that popped in a little late. Uh, Rod Charles from Oxford Township uh, is hiding down there in the bottom. We just want to acknowledge you and welcome you. Uh, and uh, to the extent that uh, you had any questions on any uh, of anything with respect to how RDDA operates, um, both from a governance standpoint and just for the day-to-day -day hand to hand combat, uh, I'll speak for Christy, uh, what Mark used to say, voluntold, but the two of us are at your disposal for any questions that you may have. Um, so feel free to uh, reach out to myself or Christy. Um, Christy knows how to get a hold of me. And uh, if you want to send her an email with your uh, contact information, I'll be happy to respond. So you know how to reach out to me directly. Thank you very much. I appreciate that generosity. And, uh, I think Christy probably knows Kelly Westbrook, who is our new DDA director. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm very pleased to uh, actually see Christy after hearing so many positive things about her over the last couple of years. Uh, and I will say, I feel the same way about our new DDA director, Kelly Westbrook. She's been phenomenal so far. Mm -hmm. uh, and as far as my attendance, you can blame Susan McCullough for that. Uh, <laughs> she sent me the link to it. So anyhow, but thank you very much for the generosity. I really appreciate uh, listening to folks and uh, hopefully I get some ideas that we can translate to uh, home of the Lone Ranger. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we, you know, we're all in this together. And, uh, you know, if you guys want to do a flip side and do a home and home and have put Christy and I on your agenda, we're happy to, uh, once again, I'll volunteer for that too, but we're happy to kind of do a little uh, dog and pony show for you guys too. So uh, that way your board can ask questions of us and, and, and that and, and that sort of thing. So like I said, you know, our, our casa is su casa, so let us know how we can be helpful to you. Well, thanks again. I really appreciate it. You bet. All right. With that, any, any other, anybody else have any uh, parting words of wisdom? All righty, Rue, thank you so much for your time, energy, effort, and life force, people. We appreciate it. It was exactly one hour, and uh, we'll see you next time. Have a great uh, night. Everybody. Stay safe. We'll thank see you. Have a great night, guys. Thank Bye, you. Yeah, bye. Yep.